In the realm of financial intrigue, Michael Burry's name dances through the headlines, with whispers of a grand investing move in anticipation of a colossal market plunge. Yet, my discerning eye sees beyond the surface, revealing a tale more nuanced and captivating. The headlines, as they often do, have taken a bit of creative license. They boldly assert that Burry has staked over $1.6 billion in a Wall Street crash. But, as discerning observers, we know that reality often diverges from sensationalism. Now, who is this Michael Burry? Why he's betting against the market, according to media of course, and why does his financial acumen command attention? Michael Burry started his investment firm with just $1 million of his own money in 2000, but now has a net worth of $1.2 billion as of September 2023. Burry has been early in predicting the market cycles, but this media is hyping the wrong information. Michael Burry earned huge money from crashes and have a rich history of identifying crashes. Burry began to analyze the housing market in 2005 and concluded that it was a bubble on the brink of collapse. He used his hedge fund, Scion Capital, to make the bet. Initially, he invested approximately $1.3 billion. Burry utilized credit default swaps, which are financial instruments that provide insurance against default on loans. He essentially bet against the subprime mortgage market. When the housing market indeed collapsed in 2007 and 2008, Burry's fund made astronomical profits. Scion Capital's total returns exceeded 489% from 2000 to 2008. Burry's personal profit from this bet is estimated to be around $100 million. Michael Lewis's book, The Big Short, chronicles Burry's bet on the housing market collapse. The book was later adapted into an Academy Award-winning film of the same name, where Christian Bale portrayed Burry. After the crisis, some of the financial institutions that were on the losing side of the CDS contracts sought legal recourse, leading to legal battles. These were eventually settled. Burry's bet is often cited as an example of the power of contrarian thinking and deep analysis in the world of finance. It also highlighted the systematic issues with the financial industry, particularly the excessive risk-taking in complex financial instruments that contributed to the crisis. While Burry's success in predicting the housing market crash is celebrated, it's important to note that not all of his subsequent predictions and investments have been as successful. This highlights the inherent unpredictability of financial markets. Michael Burry's insights and investment strategies continue to be closely followed by the financial community. His public statements and actions in the market often garner significant attention. Now, as for how we keep tabs on Burry's latest financial maneuvers, credit goes to filings with the Securities and Exchange Commission, particularly the 39 filings. These documents provide us with a glimpse into his holdings, though they are somewhat limited in scope, focusing primarily on listed stocks, ADRs, ETFs, and selective derivatives. Now, let's take a moment to demystify the mechanics of profiting from falling markets. This involves the use of put options, which essentially grant the holder the right to sell a stock at a predetermined price. It's a strategy that played a pivotal role in Burry's successes during the market downturns of 2000 and 2008. Returning to Burry's recent maneuvers, his portfolio's trajectory took an intriguing turn in the second quarter of 2023. Two significant positions emerged, predominantly dominated by put options on the QQQ and S&P 500 trackers. In essence, the magnitude of Burry's positions is not solely defined by the headline-grabbing figures. Instead, it lies in the leverage he employs, a strategic move that can amplify gains but also heighten risks. First and foremost, Michael Burry has opted for a high-leverage approach which means they are using borrowed capital to increase a potential return on their investment. In this case, they have managed to control a significant position in an underlying asset by making a relatively small upfront payment. The estimated leverage is over 60 times, allowing them to command a large position with a relatively modest initial investment. This approach can amplify gains, but it also increases the level of risk involved. Now, regarding the estimated cost, it suggested that this investor likely paid around $30 million for their entire position. However, it's important to note that this figure is based on a set of assumptions. The precise details of the options, such as strike prices and expiry dates, are not publicly available. These factors heavily influence the upfront cost of the options. Generally, options with longer expiries and strike prices closer to the current market value tend to be pricier. To arrive at the estimated $30 million, a set of reasonable assumptions were made, including a 20% downside protection. This cushion was factored into account for potential losses. However, it's crucial to understand that this estimate is far lower than the $1.6 billion figure that's been circulating in some headlines. 
Now, let's delve deeper into the composition of this investor's portfolio. The dominant sector is consumer discretionary, which encompasses non-essential goods and services like luxury items and non-essential travel. Despite other bearish sentiments expressed by the investor, this allocation indicates a bullish outlook on the U.S. economy. The largest holding in this category is Expedia Group, although it's important to note that if a recession were to occur, travel and tourism-related businesses might face challenges. Beyond consumer discretionary, the portfolio is diversified across various sectors, including energy, healthcare, industrials, and telecom. Notably, there's a recent addition of Japanese stocks. This indicates the growing interest in this market. Regarding Japan, it's intriguing to see the investors' approach. They have opted for a long position through exchange-traded funds ETFs, spreading their investments across four ETFs. Two of these provide broad exposure to Japan while the other two focus on the undervalued and small-cup Japanese stocks. This is a strategic move, given Japanese market dynamics. Major companies in Japan often heavily rely on global trade, particularly with the US and China. However, the small-cup segment represents a bet on Japan's domestic economy, suggesting confidence in its performance. Though this play hasn't yet yielded significant results, it remains a compelling position to monitor. Despite his substantial holdings in China, which were primarily concentrated in JD.com and Alibaba Group, accounting for a significant portion of his portfolio in Q1, his Q2 filing revealed that he had divested from these two stocks. The share prices of these stocks have been notably volatile, experiencing significant fluctuations. While the precise timing of his trades remains unknown, it's evident that by Q1, his position in Alibaba had more than doubled, as at his stake in JD.com, indicating a likely substantial profit from these recovery plays in the Chinese market. Interestingly, the investor has maintained a persistent focus on energy within his portfolio, despite the notable crash in energy prices since mid-2022. This suggests a belief in a potential resurgence in energy prices, a notion supported by recent increases. Looking at the current stock prices of his positions, it's evident that the majority of them have seen significant upward trends, affirming the wisdom of this decision. However, it's crucial to consider this investor's track record. There is a substantial divide between what he voices and what he executes. While his Twitter handle is Cassandra, named after a figure in mythology gifted with prophecy but cursed to never be believed, his predictions since 2015 have been notably inaccurate. From forecasting crashes to global financial meltdowns, his track record has been largely off the mark. This raises questions about the reliability of his Twitter pronouncements. In light of this, it's essential to separate his statements from his actions. His portfolio, as reflected in his Q2 filing, doesn't align with the bearish sentiments he's expressed on social media. It is more inclined towards a bullish stance, particularly when examining the sector composition and the put options in his portfolio, which would benefit from a potential collapse of the prevailing AI narrative in the US.